Disco Elysium is a role-playing game that involves you playing as amnesic cop Harry Dubois trying to figure out what the deal with the dead dude behind the hostel you've been staying at is alongside your new best friend, Kim Kitsuragi. Revachol, the city that the game takes place in, is a place haunted by dead kings, failed revolutions, and the chains of colonialism. The failures and scars of the past cut into the present in the form of old bullet holes and bombed-out craters old men play games in, and the inevitable oblivion-filled future is always, always there, waiting, creeping in at the edges of the world. The very city is, itself, an analog to Harry, a man haunted by his own past, his own failures, his own miserable present, and his own inevitable death. In Martinez, a seaside district of Revachol, you can not only actually focus on the case and solve the murder and unravel how the omnipresence of history plays its own unique role in the whole crime dealio, you can also do shit like investigate cryptids or buildings where businesses always fail because of capitalism, probably, or ghosts, maybe. Or you can go on a date with a MILF while your new best friend just kind of awkwardly walks behind you. Or you can play board games. But most importantly, and above all else, you can help turn an abandoned church into a dance club and also maybe a drug lab. If you've managed to make it to the third day in-game without dying trying to punch a child, quitting because you're unable to come up with a sexy mysterious secret to the case at hand, or sleeping in the trash, you gain access to the other half of the map. There, you can find a lot of things, like a free shack to stay in so you can finally get that guard guy to stop riding your ass, a dude who seems like he's taking his own divorce way better than Harry is taking his, and a completely unrelated to everything else dead body. There's also an abandoned church and a quartet of young adults. I mean, they're probably young adults, I don't know. There's no ages listed anywhere I can find, but I think one of them is actually like 40. Anyway, these fellows, let's call them the speed freaks, want to start up a dance club in said abandoned church but are hesitant to do so because there's two other randos already in there freaking them out. You may or may not succeed in rolling a check to realize that they actually want to start up a drug lab, depending on how logical or lucky a detective you are. There's a few chances to get modifiers to keep trying to figure this out too. You can arrest them if you learn this, but also, why the hell would you do that, seriously? Just help them with the dance club, you'll get more content that way. Anyway, when you do help them, because for the purposes of this video it will not be an if, you'll need to deal with the two other churchgoers. Inside the church, you find a weird spot where there's no sound at all. This will be a surprise tool to help us later. And also, there's a raft climbing dude who is very religious and spiritual about this no sound place. He doesn't care if you start a dance club, so he's officially considered dealt with. Also, you can take his clothes. Add those to your ever-growing weirdo wardrobe, detective. The other rando, Suna, is a bit more complicated. First of all, she hates the Speed Freaks' music. Second of all, she knows they want to cook the hell out of some drugs, which she isn't too keen on either. Ultimately though, you can get her to agree to a compromise if you help her out with some errands back at that place where a bunch of places failed either due to capitalism or a ghost. Thank god for fast travel! Unless you're me, and never thought to buy a map when you were first playing through. Oops! Ultimately, and sorry to go back to a point discussed like two paragraphs ago, there's tons of different ways that this quest can go. You can kick Suna out to let the speed freaks move in, you can just have the speed freaks arrested, you can let the drug lab run unopposed. The different choices you can make, their implications, and the fact that they're available as choices at all are all important parts of what Disco Elysium explores as societal commentary, but also to keep this video at least somewhat focused, I am very good at this. We'll just look at the side quest as if you got all the churchgoers to get along and as if you got the speed freaks to ditch the drug lab part of the plan. Groundbreaking stuff on my part, really. Anyway, when all's said and all's done, you finally get to finish the task and get some sweet, sweet experience and also the ability to dance with Kim, provided those dice rolls are nice. And also there's some thematic resonance with regards to the rest of the game or whatever, I guess, but being able to dance with Kim is more important. <laughs> Of course, dancing with your new bestie is important, but another major part of the gameplay as a whole is the various ideologies that you can fall into, from communism to fascism to moralism to ultra-liberalism. NPCs and NPC interactions are basically unavoidable for finding your political footing, meaning interaction with other people is a pretty important part of this whole politics thing, and leaning into different ideologies can affect your stats, your experience gain or health loss based on certain dialogue choices, or money gain in the case of ultra-liberalism, and, specifically in the Final Cut version, what political vision quest you get to do. 
The player going all in into any of these modes of thought pretty much just involves turning Harry into a parody of a man so desperate for some kind of understanding of his own place in the world who is also coping extremely poorly with his ex-something leaving him that he'll become an almost caricature of what each ideology represents. But despite this, ultimately he'll still seek out some sort of community based on his own beliefs. And that is what leads Harry into pursuing these political vision quests. Depending on your political leanings, you seek out different people to try and realize your vision for a world of communism slash fascism slash moralism slash ultra liberalism. You join a book club as a communist. You discuss time travel with various like-minded individuals as a fascist. You try and hustle hardcore as an ultra liberal, and you learn about the moral intern and consider their agendas as a moralist before making contact with one of the aerostatics looming over Revishul. What you can learn about the different characters and political leanings as a result of these vision quests is explorative of one of the big themes of Disco Elysium, humanity's limitless capacity for being imperfect and also just kind of sucking. And also like, you know, politics. But this video is supposed to be about the dance club, so let me just try and actually get to my point real quick. Many aspects of the game, like the previously discussed political vision quests, emphasize interaction and getting involved with and talking to specific people. The community of Martinez, in general, just like as a whole, is a huge part of the game. Even focusing solely on the case and ignoring any side quests involves significant interaction with the people of the district. You gotta talk to people to find out more about the murder after all. And beyond that, the people themselves, the ones that make up this community, are the ones capable of employing empathy and kindness, as well as cruelty. Even if they're not good people, even if they're messy and complicated and bad, and even if trying to implicate individuals as inherently good or bad is a fool's errand in the first place, that personhood never goes away. It can't, really. For your part, you can gift hats, put up I love you kuno graffitos, and comfort widows among a litany of other small but kind acts. On the part of the NPCs, bullet trajectories are left behind, group lynchings are faked for the sake of others' safety, hours are spent sitting with you as you wait for the tide to recede. The list goes on. People can be kind. People can care. People can fuck up immensely and still help others. The ideologies, the politics, all of it's almost pointless in the face of a confusing and terrifying world. One where many live grim realities with no way out and no way up. And no matter your own in-game leanings, there's nothing you, as Harry, can do to actually tangibly change the way things are. Disco Elysium is very much drowning in political commentary and critique by its very nature. I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to say otherwise by proclaiming it pointless. In fact, this sort of fatalism with regards to the state of things in Revachol is a big part of that very commentary and critique. But also, to make another thing clear, Disco Elysium is, like, 100% a communist game. After all, the game itself very much dives deep into explorations of the potential and hope for actual for real change. There's the idea and discussion of the in-universe concept of Le Retour. There's the fact that the murder you're trying to solve nearly breaks out a full-on war between the Union and the Wild Pines. And there's the entire communist political vision quest. Should the stars go out and all that. And also, actually, you know what? I'm just going to try and cut myself off because this video is supposed to be about the dance club side quest. Oops. All this was really just to build up to the point that, despite everything, the one thing anyone can always do is care and love and keep existing. Other people matter. Maybe I'm harping on this point a bit much, but it's an important part of the game to me, and this is my video, and if I want to talk about love and community, I will. To finally sum up why I talk so much about not the dance club in this video that is allegedly about the dance club, I'll be repeating myself just a bit real quick. Harry's political vision quests are, again, an offshoot of his fucked up amnesic desires to understand his place in the world and his god-awful coping mechanisms for the middle-class woman that left him as he turns himself into a parody of a man with political beliefs, or I guess technically you do that to him because you choose what he believes, but that. And yet, at the end of the day, these vision quests inherently involve finding other like-minded people because belonging only comes with finding, well, other people. And this leads back into what the Dance Club side quest explores as part of the importance of kindness and community. You can also consider this maybe an overly optimistic and naive way of viewing the content of the game, but uh... I don't know man, I could use some more optimism in my life, I don't know. Thanks for watching this far at all. I love you. To actually and finally bring this point back around to the dance club quest, well, the speed freaks are kind of like their own little community, aren't they? A group of friends sticking and working together. As a cell would say, people are sweet. 
Setting up the dance club without also setting up the drug lab involves convincing the speed freaks to consider doing something for themselves, for their own happiness and for its own sake. Egghead in particular is very enthusiastic about this idea. Though Andre does initially express hesitance with regards to not having the drug lab as a part of it for a small handful of reasons, he ultimately does follow through, even getting excited enough about the club that'll start to dance there. Just, like, all the time, I guess. Even though Egghead's proclamations that the dance club will be a victory for the light can prompt a passive shivers check that tells you there'll be nothing, there's still something very hopeful about this dance club trying its damnedest to exist in the first place at all, since that's really just the case for everyone and everything, especially in Revachol, the city awaiting its own apocalyptic future. I said earlier that Harry is a reflection of Revachol, but the truth is, Revachol is a mirror to all of its inhabitants. Even if it'll be nothing, even if everything will end up being nothing eventually anyway, that's no reason to give up. You can stay vigilant. This is also something you can do with a cell, with her contact mic out in the snow. By handing it back to her after she dismisses it as silly, you can convince her that the happiness it brings her will be an important tool for the future. Basically, if you want to get that dance club going, you're going to have to offer up some kindness and understanding. Throw in some empathy and hope while you're at it. Throughout the game, there's a lot of moments like this, little acts of kindness and humanity. The two go hand in hand, really. I brought up some examples earlier, but here's a few more just for the heck of it. Getting Annette's mom to let her out of the cold, gifting Gart a new dead bird to replace the one you broke, reaching an understanding with Kuno. Throughout the game, you can just be, like, nice to people, even if you're fundamentally a messed up person. By setting up the dance club, you're even granted naming rights. And one of the options is Disco Elysium! Whoa, that's... That's the title of the game you're playing! Shit, dude, you can, you can also talk more with the speed freaks if you get them inside the church. You can reach out to and talk with the cell some more about her past and her friends. You can dance with Andre. You can sync your signs with Noid and... Well, you can't really talk to the rafter, no sound religion guy again, but you can still wear his clothes. Setting up the dance club can also involve helping Suna find some kind of solace for what happened in her past, for the inexplicable disaster that led to the failure of her and her company's game. And there's that idea of the omnipresent history coming back again. Suna herself was once a part of her own community, Fortress Occident, one that she wants to make some sort of amends with. I mean, sure, you can also, like, evict her, but why the hell would you do that? Is there something wrong with you? She's literally just standing there. Leave her alone. Furthermore, helping Suna out with her research allows for further exploration of the 2mm hole in the world. More on that in a hot second. The point is, getting the dance club up and running only opens up the world of the game even further, because no matter how minuscule a role a single group of humans can play in the grand scheme of things, the fact of the matter is that people are the world. Each and every one is a part of Rebishol, a city scarred and imperfect but loved and loving. They are Rebishol, the same way Harry is. It's about kindness, caring about one another, and the reflection of the weight of individual choice in a game that prides itself on being full of them. One of the more nutso things present in the world of Elysium, other than giant reed bugs, is the Pale, a manifestation of human pollution and entropy that is slowly encroaching into, well, everything. There's a lot of other things it can represent in, like, a thematic analogy analysis sense. The past, history itself coming alive, global warming, a phenomenon perpetuated by human hands, the heat death of the universe, but except it's like your neighbor instead of a long-distance relationship. An inevitable end. But assigning it a specific meaning isn't really what I'm here for, except for that part two seconds ago where I assigned it a meaning, based primarily on the giant read bug statements, at least. But also ignore that, because what I'm about to go on about in my annoying voice is mostly going to involve the idea of the pale as the past, even though it can be and is a whole bunch of other things. In the church turned dance club, there's a two millimeter hole in the world, as I mentioned earlier. Suna calls it the swallow, in fact. It takes in sound and leaves nothing but silence in its mere vicinity. Harry's past nerdy interest in the pale can potentially allow for a revelation of the theory that the pale spreads through holes. So basically what I'm saying is the swallow is the pale, but small. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, the world of Elysium is on the precipice of its own end from the pale, which is terrifying and the abandoned church has a hole in the world itself, one that may bring about this world-ending non-matter, which is terrifying. They're analogous. Elysium is the dance club, the dance club is Elysium, but small. Now, moving on from establishing this comparison, I've got yet another rhetorical question. 
What does the building that houses this noise-erasing two-millimeter hole do? This church-turned-dance club? Well, it makes nothing but sound. New music, the songs of a new generation in the face of a hole that may or may not end up spitting out the apocalyptic past. I don't know, man. It's just one of those things that feels so self-representative in such a way that I feel like all I can do is just mention what the situation is and let it sit. Like, it's really just right there. I like to be hopeful and optimistic as established however many minutes ago, but I'll still bring up the more pessimistic way of looking at it. That is, a representation of willful ignorance in the same way the moral intern sort of projects and promotes a similar vibe towards the pale as a whole, and just, like, in general. In fact, to finish the moralist political vision quest, the dance club needs to get set up. But again, optimism is my cup of tea, so I say hope for a new generation! The work may not be finished by your hands, but that's no reason to stop the work altogether. Anyway, the pale is and can be many things, but one of the things that it can be is a history that can't be let go of, and the 2mm hole subsumes all sound into it, rendering it mute. And in spite of this 2mm hole, the dance club soldiers on, and in spite of the pale, humanity soldiers on. And in spite of his lost memories and the ex-something he still clings to in his dreams, Harry keeps soldiering on. Sunrise, Parabellum. Well, unless you fuck up really bad and get, like, a game over. But hey, it's an RPG. The player character is going to have to be able to die or get fucked up or something in some way. Just like real life. And speaking of getting fucked up, if you manage to start dancing in the club after getting it set up, you can dance so fucking hardcore that the city itself speaks to you. There are other instances of the city itself taking up conversation, but this one is the most extensive, and it's also the one in which you're actually formally introduced to it. The city speaks of a future in which it's a race from the world, but also speaks of your ability to keep it alive. If you horrendously mess up with getting Kim to dance with you because you failed the authority check, the city can even be like, go make up with him right now, dude. And also she says she loves you. Isn't that sweet? Again, it's like, you know, community. This conversation with the city, La Revachelière, La Revachelière, La Revachelière. This conversation with the city, La Revachelière, loops back around to the ideas expressed with regards to community. This is the flawed, fucked up city you live in brought to consciousness, and it's saying it loves you. It's saying it loves you in a space where new sound is constantly generated in spite of the swallow within it. A space established only through understanding and a willingness to help. A space that was once a site of violence turned into a site of hope for the future, for art, for dance. And then you wake up from your so fucking hardcore dancing lying on the ground like a dope. Say thanks to your spinal cord! And also say thanks to you for doing the side quest, because you wouldn't have been able to have this conversation at all without it. But mostly say thanks to your spinal cord. Disco Elysium is a game about a lot of things, like dying from Kim yelling at you for being an off-your-rocker fascist, and spending eight in-game hours on a thought project about being gay because you talk to a handsome man, and the persistence of trauma and the infernal engine that keeps going on in spite of it. There's nothing unimportant in Disco Elysium. Meaning lies everywhere within its code. But the dance club side quest in particular felt so vital to Disco Elysium for me because it's a thematic microcosm of so much of what Disco Elysium has to offer, all neatly packaged into one single task chain. It explores ideas of community, the role kindness can play, and the horrifying nature of Elysium as a whole. You can even slip politics in there too! The perfect stereo investigation! With all that in mind, it really just makes so much sense that going through with a side quest is one of the very few times in-game that the title gets properly and fully dropped. Or you could name it something else too, that works. Ruins my point a little, but sure, okay. No Truce with the Furies is pretty badass, I guess. In the end though, it's a disco world. This video essay was pretty unfocused, actually, huh? Well, I never claimed to be good at this. Also, I never really know how to end these things, so uh, thanks for watching. I love you. Bye.